Hello and welcome to the Mo Ruana designed by Iman van der Krun. I'm happy to be working with you through this pattern to make this lovely Ruana. We need to gather our supplies. A DK weight was used. I am going to be using my main color in this dark blue shade. I'm going to try to stripe my front two panels using the white, the gray, and the red as well. The pattern says 2,600 meters or 2,843 yards of DK weight yarn. When you're working a wearable, it's a little bit more important to watch the gauge or um, your size. So it's a great idea to make a swatch. So for the Tunisian part, you can make a swatch or a sample size, 13 stitches across and 11 rows. Size seven millimeter for the Tunisian hook was used. So mine, I've used the seven millimeter and I have just about the 10 centimeters wide and the 10 centimeters tall. So I'm gonna stick with the size seven for mine. In a lot of patterns, I need to go down a size hook because I'm usually loose. Um, when I tried that, my swatch was too small. So it's a good idea for the proper fit of the Ruana that you do a test sample. Now for a Tunisian hook, there's many different styles. You can have a really long hook. The designer suggests you need at least you need a hook at least 17 centimeters long to uh, have enough room for these the width of these panels here. You can use one with cables as well. I have an interchangeable set with different sizes of cables I can use. However, I'm going to be using this fairly inexpensive set I have. It does have a long cable on it. That's a fixed cable, but the hook itself is very lightweight and has a bit of a thumb rest in it, which I have found over doing lots of Tunisian that it works the best for my hand without causing um, discomfort in my hand. Um, just as long as you have a minimum of 17 centimeters length to hold all the loops we need to will work for the design. And then the ribbing is done with a standard crochet hook. Now my DK size of weight it typically calls for a size four hook. The designer used a larger hook size um, to match with the Tunisian. And I, as well, the swatch was done with a six millimeter size hook. And you also want to have a seven as well. So you're going to work your, your swatch and see where you fit. You want to have seven stitches across, should equal about five centimeters and 11 rows should equal about 10 centimeters. So that's worked in the same pattern as the ribbing, which is the first part of the pattern. You want to do the same style of stitches for that to work with that. So again, you might need to adjust your hook size to meet this, and then you need one size larger as well. So you can go ahead and gather your supplies and we will get started. So to start, we are going to start on one of these front panels with the border or the ribbing that goes across the bottom of that panel. So we want to take our smaller size hook. So I'm using my six millimeter, the yarn on the hook, and we're going to chain eight. Eight chains. Then we'll turn the chain over so we can see that third loop which creates a bump on the back of the chain so in those back bumps not the first one closest to our hook but starting in the second one we'll insert our hook under that back bump and make a single crochet and we'll do that in each of the back bumps of each chain for a total of seven single crochet so that's three oops four, five, six, and seven. 
Now for the rest of the rows, we're going to be working most of the stitches in the back loop only to create the ribbing effect. When we do it in that manner, sometimes the stitches can kind of curl over on either ends. So to avoid that, the designer makes this suggestion. So we'll turn our work, we'll chain one, and then we'll take our loop off the hook and that loop will sort of twist on its own a quarter turn and insert it back onto our hook again. Then I just tighten it up a little bit and then we can insert under both loops for the first stitch to make a single crochet. And then for five stitches, we're going to work in the back loop only. So normally we insert under both loops, not this front loop, but in the back loop we insert and make a single crochet. So five times we'll make this back loop only, single crochet, that's four and five. And then under both loops of that last stitch, we'll make our final single crochet. So by working the back loop only, we have this sort of ridge that is formed with those front loops, which help with the ribbing effect. So turn your work, chain one, remove the hook, let that chain turn and insert your hook again. Single crochet through both loops, back loop only single crochet in the next five, and then single crochet through both loops of that last single crochet of the row, and three rows are done. You want to continue that for a total of 50 rows. So I'll let you do that now, and I will meet you back here at the end. So when you have your 50 rows done, you will have ended, oops, mine's flipped. So your hook and loop is at the opposite edge of where our starting yarn is at. You want to have this piece very, very slightly stretched will be somewhere between 38 and 40 centimeters long. If you've adjusted the size a little bit, you will want to make sure that you end on an even numbered row so that that loop is at the opposite side as our starting thread. So we turn our work sideways then, so it's actually the wrong side of this first piece that is facing us. We will remove our standard hook from the loop. Now you want to grab your Tunisian hook. And insert in the loop. So we're going to be picking up our loops or around or through the edges of these rows that we worked. So if you're following the written pattern, it is described as pull loop, pull the loop in whichever stitch or row that we're in. So I call it, I will say pull up a loop. It's the same idea as what is written in the written pattern. So we want to pull up a loop on each row down here. So this first one I'm going to put in the same place as that last single crochet was worked to pull up my first loop. And then in the space of that turning chain. So at the base of the single crochet, and then the space created by the turning chain. And we'll just continue that down each of the rows. We want to make sure that we have picked up 50 loops, so then with our starting loop, we'll have 51 loops on our hook at the end of the row. So you can go ahead and pull those loops up right now. So I've worked my way down. I have 50 loops on my hook. For the last loop, I want to in, insert in sort of this skipped chain. Remember how we worked in the bottom loop and we missed that first chain? So in through those loops of that starting or that chain. I might need to push it on a bit to get over my bigger hook. There we go. So 51 loops on your hook. For those of you new to Tunisian crochet, this is called the forward pass. So the forward pass is picking up all these loops. Then we work what's called a return pass, 
we yarn over and pull through one loop, which is like a chain one, which gives the height for the next stitch. But we don't need to turn our work, we just keep this side facing us all the time. Then we yarn over and pull through two loops all the way down the row until we're left with only one loop on our hook. So that's a return pass. We yarn over, pull through one loop first, then yarn over, pull through two loops. So the two loops you're pulling through is the one that's left on your hook and then the next loop that we pulled up. So you can go ahead and work this all the way down the row. So this stitch that we just worked up where you pull up a loop like that and take it off your hook is the Tunisian simple stitch that we are working. So these loops create what we call as bars, vertical bars. So what we do for the next row is we want to pull our loop, not on this edge loop, but on this first vertical bar, that first loop that we picked up, we insert our hook just underneath that bar, yarn over and pull that loop up and leave it on your hook. Insert under the next vertical bar, pull up a loop. And that's the Tunisian simple stitch. And again, we'll work all the way down the row inserting our hook under the vertical bar to pull up the next loop. So you want to work this until you have the 50 loops on the hook and then I'll meet you there and show you how we pick up that last loop. As you're working down the row, you might find that it's bunching up and then just every so often you just slide those loops farther down your hook. So as you've worked down the row and you have picked up those 50 loops, we now want to pick up the final edge stitch. You want to go through two loops. This first one is a, a slightly trickier to see, but there's the first loop we can see right there at the top edge, and then you also want to get the back loop of that. Mine has kind of curled its way over so that your hook actually goes under two loops, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then you can see how that sort of creates a V on the side edge, which will match our other edge then. So that's our second forward pass. Now, for those of you who have tried Tunisian before, you will note that after several rows that the Tunisian piece can be curling up a fair bit. By working this ribbing first and picking up our loops onto the ribbing, that prevents this work from curling, which is a lovely feature. So we have 51 loops on our hook. We want to do the return pass again, which is that pull through one loop or chain one, and then yarn over, pull through two loops until you're left oops, with one loop on your hook. And again, as you're working your way backwards, you may find that your loops are stretched out a fair bit, and then it'll be a bit easier to work if you bunch them a little bit closer to the tip of your hook as you're working. Mine was a little bit too bunched there. I didn't have enough room to move without pulling off extra loops. After doing a few rows of this, you will find that it becomes easier and easier and you develop sort of your own rhythm of when to move the loops closer to your hook and so on. So we have done two rows of Tunisian. We want to work 70 rows of this TSS or simple stitch. If you don't want your root your Ruana quite as long down the front panel. You may not want to do quite as many rows. You have to use your judgment on that, but the pattern suggests to do 70 rows of this. Now, if you're uncertain how to count, we can see these vertical bars and you can see how we have it almost looks like a chain going horizontally between these stitches. And so you can count those horizontal rows there 
or if you're looking at the end of the piece, you could put a stitch marker in this first one here, the V's, and then you can just, you know, that's row one, and then you will just count these sideways V's up the side as you work to know which row you're on. So continue to work for 70 rows. So once you have completed your first panel, it will look something like this. Now I chose to use four colors, and as I changed into the new color, I did three rows to make the change, switching back and forth on the return pass from each of the colors, and then continued. But your length should be about 70 rows, or your desired length. If you've worked Tunisian crochet before, we often end a piece with a bind off row. We do not want to do the bind off row. So once you've finished the 70th row at the end of the return pass, you will cut your yarn. And then we need to work a second panel in the same way, except on the second panel, do not cut your yarn after row 70. And I'll meet you at that point. So when we've completed our second panel and row 70, we will start right away into row 71. So I'm working row 71 back in my first color that I started with. We'll pick up the stitches across the row, but do not work the return pass and I'll meet you at that point. So we should have picked up our 51 stitches across the top of our second panel. Now at this point, we are going to make it a little bit wider across the back. So we're going to add a section of chains right now before we join our second panel. So we're going to chain 15. We want to chain very loosely. So chain 15 or if you prefer whatever equals 15 centimeters or even wider, whichever you prefer. I'm going to do the 15. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. 14 and 15 chains which gives us some extra width across the back so you want your chains to be fairly loose as you've made them we'll remove our hook from that last chain put a stitch marker in it and then working on the back of the chain we want to insert our hook on that back bump and leave it on the hook and we're going to continue working placing that back bump of each chain onto the hook and I'm kind of using my fingers to help guide that back bump onto the hook So it should look something like that. This can be a little bit tricky. I needed to work it a few times before I didn't. Sometimes I skipped one of the chains. And then after you have added those 15 loops on the hook or picked up the 15 chains, you want to put the working loop back on your hook. And then we will take our second panel or the first panel we had worked And starting with this very first loop, we'll insert under that and continue working this forward pass across our first panel as well, picking up the 51 loops, remembering at the end of the row to work through both of those end loops. And then go ahead and work the return pass as well. So once you've finished row 71, return pass, we'll just work all the way across again, picking up our, all our loops for row 72. So as you're working down this first side panel here, you'll want the 51st loop as part of that chain now. Then we just work across the chain in the same way, picking up that vertical bar loop that was formed as we did our return pass. So just carefully picking up those loops across the chain section and then across the next one. You'll work the regular return pass and continue this 
until you have 70 rows. And I'll meet you at that point. So as you're working the back panel, be sure to check your counting every so often. It's easy to lose a stitch or two on these long rows. So just double check that as you're working. Now, once you have your 70 rows complete, we do not want to do the bind off row. We're going to be working that um, bottom ribbing, how we started the row on it. So once you fold it in half, mine, you can see the line from the front and the back because I have different colors, but the back panel should measure up the same length as the front panel without this ribbing edge. So now we're going to work on this ribbing on the back panel. So using our standard crochet hook, I'm using that six millimeter size again. <clears throat> we will start right where we left off on row 70 of the back panel, no bind off row. We will chain eight. Seven and eight chains. Turning to the back, we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and insert under that back bump. Pull up a loop and complete a single crochet. And we'll do that a total of seven times, working back down the chain, inserting under the back bump. That's six and seven single crochet. And we're going to work between the stitches of these TSS. To make a slip stitch. So between the edge and that first bar slip stitch between the second and the third bar slip stitch. Now, if you find when you do that, that it's creating these larger holes in your work, you can also choose to make the slip stitch slightly different. So between that front loop and the back loop of that first bar is where you'll place your slip stitch. So if you've worked Tunisian crochet, it's like a Tunisian knit stitch only we're calling it a slip stitch and that'll help close in that gap a little bit as we work. Okay, then we'll turn our work, then we'll single crochet in this first stitch. We'll single crochet in this first stitch and then back loop only single crochet in five stitches, one, two, three, four, and five back loop only singles, and then single crochet both loops of the remaining stitch. We'll chain one and turn, and again, letting that come off our hook, Sorry, my yarn just got twisted. There we go. And then single crochet through both loops of the first, single crochet back loop only in five stitches. Single crochet in that last single crochet. And then we're ready to make those slip stitches again. And I'm going between the front and the back bar of the next stitch to make my slip stitch in one and two. We do not chain on this one, we turn our work, 
the knot working in the slip stitches in the first stitch we single crochet both loops back loop only single crochet and so on so we'll continue to work this ribbing all the way down the edge of this back panel we want to end with a row two which is the row I'm working right now so row two, we normally chain one before we turn. When it's your last row, you will not do that chain one. So can continue that all the way down and I'll meet you at the end of our ribbing. Okay, so our ribbing across the bottom will look something like this and you should have ended on a row two. We do not chain one at the end of the row. So if we took a look at the diagram in our written pattern, we have worked these front two panels then we worked across and made our back panel and we just finished working this ribbing here across the back. Now we're going to turn and work down this far side of the back panel and all the way across that front panel to make ribbing across there. So a couple of things for this, if you prefer, you can continue with the same color. I'm going to change to a contrast color. That's my preference and you'll also be able to see this side ribbing better on the video. The other thing is, because when we're working on this part of our simple stitch, the stitches are a bit taller or farther apart than we worked on the bottom. So the designer suggests going to a larger hook. So I have my seven millimeter here. I will try with this. There's also a way if my yarn is quite thin, so I'm thinking it's going to look too um, holy and not uh, a nice enough ribbing for the look I want. So you can go back to your other size hook and I'll show you how you compensate for that. So you can find your larger hook and we'll get started. So to start, we will chain eight from where we stopped our border along the bottom edge. So it's three, four, seven, and eight chains. Then again, turning to the back side in that second chain from the hook, insert under that back bump and make a single crochet. The next back bump. So that's two, so we'll want to have seven single crochet. Six and seven single crochet. So we're going to skip this first single crochet of our ribbing that we just finished and slip stitch in the next and in the next one. And then we will turn. We'll single crochet in this first single crochet, back loop only, single crochet in five, and 
single crochet both loops of that last stitch we'll turn remove the loop let it make its quarter turn chain one and then work back this way single crochet both loops single crochet back loop of the next five four and five single crochet both loops of that last single crochet slip stitch in each of the next two stitches and ready to turn and work that again So this is the row two. We turn, single crochet, and back loop only. So this is row three, repeating of row three. And single crochet under both loops ready to make that slip stitch in two and then continue to repeat that so if you've done a few more rows you'll want to take a look and check your ribbing and see if you're happy with it I think mine is quite loose and holy looking so I'm going to try it with my sl smaller size hook and show you how we will work that so I've reworked my first few rows with my smaller hook and I like that a little bit better. It's a bit more sturdy and not quite as loose and holy looking. So I'm going to be sticking with my smaller size hook. So what the designer suggests is to use stitch markers and to mark every sixth or eighth of these chain one that was at the end of our, just before we did, or the start of our return pass for each row. One, two, three, four, five, six would be here. Or you could do every eighth stitch. And then when we get to those, you would put your second slip stitch of one border row in this stitch. And then when you come back the other way, you would put your first, first slip stitch in that same stitch as you work back. So I'll work a few more rows and I'll show you how to work where we place the marker. So I've done a few more rows and I'm going to make my slip stitch in the next stitch here and then slip stitch into the stitch with the marker. Then I'll turn and work my two rows. Now normally we would go to the next two stitches for our slip stitch but when we're using the smaller hook, we're going to slip stitch back into the same marked stitch. And you can remove that marker and slip stitch into the next stitch before turning. So that way we've doubled up every so often one of the stitches so that our ribbing lays nice and flat with the smaller hook and doesn't stretch or pull the sides in. and so on. So if you like, you can mark every sixth or eighth stitch down the side, and that'll help you when you get there, remind you to do two slip stitches in those. So you can work all the way along the side edge of the back panel and continue all along the side edge of our front panel, and I will meet you just before we get to the end of that front panel. So when you've worked all the way along the edge, your last row, you will want to make single crochet through both loops instead of back loop only before joining and fastening off. So when we've worked all the way down that first edge, we want to find the other outside edge and work the ribbing in the same manner along this edge as well. 
So we have just finished working both of our outside edges borders. We now want to work in the same way on the inside edge and across the back and down the other inside edge. So we will join in the one corner as we did previously, chain eight and work our single crochet rows back and forth. So using the same hook as you did for the outside edges and connecting in the same way. So if you're right-handed, you'll start on the right front side. If you're left-handed, you'll start on the left front side. Right side so my inner edge, the right side of my work facing me, I'm right-handed, so I have my right panel in my hand. I've joined it to the bottom corner, chained eight, ready to work in those back bumps, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, in the same way that we have worked our other side edges. So you should have seven single crochet working back on that chain eight, ready to connect to the next row. And turn your work to work back with the single crochets and working those back loops, single crochet and so on. So you can go ahead and do that and I, you will work all the way around that inside edge, including across the back of the neck and down the other panel, and fasten off. As we work along the neck edge, we want to put our hook under those unused two loops of that chain that we worked across to form the neck edge. For our final step of this Ruana, we want to make the hood. So I have my piece here. This is our back neck edging, and I have my two front panels on either side. We want to place a stitch marker about in the halfway mark or the center of our back panel, and then measure about 18 centimeters over and add another stitch marker and 18 centimeters on this side and a stitch marker. So we're going to be starting at our stitch marker here, pulling up loops across to the center. And then we want to make sure we pull up equal number of loops across to our next stitch marker. So in the written pattern, it recommends that we will pull up a total of 48 loops. So we want to place 24 between this marker and our center marker and then 24 from here to here. If you adjusted the number of stitches you had on your front panels or the back panel, you may um, have a total um, either larger or smaller than the 48 loops. So you just need to keep that in mind as you're working that. So this hood will be worked, will be working in front of this ribbing that we did. So when you're wearing your piece, if you don't have the hood on, it'll fall to the back and you'll still see this ribbing across the top. So taking the color you wish for your hood, if you're using all the same color, go ahead with that. Again, I'm choosing a contrast color just so you can see my placement better for the video. What we want to be doing is working in the stitches, the same place where we made these slip stitches as we worked the ribbing and underneath those top two loops or those, those side loops of that front piece to insert our hook. So you need to have my yarn over here, insert my hook and pull up the loop. Then working in the next stitch, just pass those other slip stitches that are there, insert my hook, pull up a loop. We'll continue that across the top. So 
So then we come, come working across this back edge as well. Picking up our loops in the same place as we made those slip stitches. Then I've almost reached the center, so I'm going to now count my loops that I have across, keeping track of how many I have on the front panel and across the back, and making sure I have my 24. So once you have half the number of loops as you think you need for your hood, then we will start just past the center marker, begin picking up loops across the top again where we did the slip stitches, and remembering to keep track of the count, how many we have on the back loop. So how many we pick up on this side of the center stitch marker equals the same as we have on this side of the back panel and so on. So I had picked up nine on the first part of the back side. So I have nine loops that I picked up on this side. And I had picked up 15 loops on this front panel. So 15 loops on this front panel. So just double check the count of your stitches that you have your required amount of stitches pulled up. So this is our first forward pass for the hood. We will just work the return pass in the same way we did for our main panels of the Ruana. So finish this return pass. And then we'll just continue working our regular forward pass. So picking up loops in each of those loops we just did and making the regular return passes until we've made about 33 rows or 31 centimeters. So you can go ahead and work those rows now and I'll meet you back here at that point. So when you have worked the recommended 33 rows of the TSS or the simple stitch for the hood, you want to try it on and see if you're happy with the length. There's a picture in the written pattern of trying it on. I added a few extra rows to mine. I wanted a bit more generous of a hood. When we join the top of the hood together, it'll add about half a centimeter, so not that much extra to the hood. So we don't cut our yarn, and we're going to remove our Tunisian hook once we have the hood the desired length. So we're going to take our smaller size standard crochet hook, the six millimeter, and we want to take our rectangle of the hood and fold it so the wrong side, so fold it like a book from the top corner to the top corner, but the wrong side is then facing me. And I'm going to turn it so the folded edge is over here. My working yarn is in back. The open edge is on this side. So we have our loop on our hook from the back part of the folded section. And then finding this first row here, sort of that side edge, we want to insert our hook through there, pull up a loop and then yarn over, pull through two loops. That's our first join finished. So to continue our join, we want to find this next stitch. We want to go around both the front and the back loop like a post stitch, pull up a loop. And then on this side here, I'm finding my first loop here. We want to go around so that the loop is here and you can see how it continues around the back. So there's a front and back. We want to go around both of those. Pull up a loop, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Then on the back side, finding that next loop, going around both of the strands, pull up a loop, pull up a loop. And we'll continue joining in this way 
making like a front post stitch and a back post stitch to pull up our loops. Yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so continue to work that all the way down the joining of the hood and I'll meet you as we get close to this end. And as you work down the row, getting those very last stitches can be a little bit tricky. I'm just sort of folding mine out a bit to the right side. There's that loop for the back. And then for the front, this last stitch here. There we go. And then you can go ahead and fasten off. So your join will look like this row of V's or sort of single crochet on the inside. Fold the hood out like this. We form that triangle top. And then when we fold the hood out to the right side, you can see how that join looks from the top then. So now we want to add a ribbing to the outside of our hood to line up with these ribbings from the front panel. So if you are right-handed, you are going to start on the right side of the hood, which is the opposite side when you're looking at it. So I want to start on this side to start my ribbing, working all the way around the hood and end over here. So I'm starting with uh, the right side of the hood. So the hood, the folded hood part seam is on this side here. Right side is facing me. I want to slip stitch to this first stitch join. Now mine's a little bit loose, so mine will stretch a bit, but that will tighten up as we work. For the first row, we are going to join to the ribbing, our front panel ribbing. <clears throat> so I've joined my yarn in the first stitch of the hood with the right side facing, and then taking this border edging here, and I want to be working around this row of stitches here, we are going to work seven front post single crochet, not around this turning chain at the end. So keeping my yarn up above, insert my hook around that first post. One, two, three, six, and seven front post single crochet and we do not work that turning chain. Then we'll turn our work and you can, if you wish to do that, let the loop off your hook and let it turn. Chain one, make the single crochet through both loops and then five back loop only single crochet just as we've worked the rest of our ribbing. And then through both loops of that last stitch, ready to make our connections to the side. Now the first one we want to put in that same stitch as our join and then slip stitch in the next one. Turn our work, work those stitches again. And we'll just continue in this way, making the ribbing all the way along the hood as we have worked these rows, the previous rows. So that's a row three, row four, working from the outside edge, edge back towards the hood. Make 
make a slip stitch in the next edge of the hood and the next one and repeat. So we'll repeat those rows three and four all the way along the hood. Now you want to use the same size of hook as you used for your other ribbing. So I use the smaller size hook for my ribbing. Same way, every six or eight stitches, you want to double up that first slip stitch with the previous one. So that your, your ribbing works out to the same size as your hood, just as we did previously. And when you worked all the way around, you want to work finish on a row four. And I'll meet you at that point over on the other side of the hood. So when you work, get to the peak, the top of the hood, we don't want to work a slip stitch into this joining row. So I've worked a slip stitch in my last row before the join. So this next one I'm going to place over the join. And it'll depend on how many rows of the hood or if you're doubling up some of these slip stitches, depending on your size of hook. You might have to, in between the two slip stitches, one will be before the join, one will be after but we just don't work a slip stitch into the joining row. Okay, so I've worked my ribbing all the way around the hood and I've come down the other side, ready to start attaching to our front panel ribbing. So again, I'm switching to red just so you can see the stitch placement as we finish up. So we should have ended on a row four for our ribbing, slip stitch in this last stitch of the hood. We don't want to make the second slip stitch. Now we want to turn our work so the wrong side of the hood is facing and lay it across that front panel ribbing. So then we're going to work joining slip stitches for the ribbing from the hood to join it to the front panel ribbing. So I want to insert my yarn in this first stitch of the hood ribbing. So insert my hook through that and then around the post of that first single crochet of the front panel ribbing. Yarn over, pull through that post and through the stitch and through the loop on the hook. So our first joining stitch. So we're working from the hood out to the far edge. Wrong side of the hood is facing. Insert in the next stitch and around the post of the next stitch on the front panel ribbing, pull through that stitch, through that stitch, and the loop on our hook. And we'll continue to work that. So we make seven of these joining slip stitches. That's three, four, five, Try that one once more. Six, and the last one here. Around the last post, not using that turning chain. And then we can go ahead and fasten off. We turn it the right side. You can see our join there. So then once we've had our hood finished, we can see the back panel of Ruana here, that top ribbing, but you can see how the ribbing goes fairly seamlessly then from the front panel up the hood around and down the next panel. So go ahead, fasten in all of your ends and hope this Ruana gives you cozy pleasure as you wear it. Enjoy.